The geoboard is a very popular piece of concrete material that is used in a lot of classes. Anywhere from grade one right up to grade nine, there's so many different activities one can do with the geoboard. We should show you two or three activities which are really um, exciting to use um, to solve on the geoboard. So let's look at the primary one to start off with. We shall talk about on and in. So I can say to student, let's make a figure on the geo board and let's see some of the characteristics of that figure. So this figure, there are four pegs on and no peg inside. So the immediate question is, how many different figures can you make on the geo board such that there are four pegs on the figure and no peg inside? So this clearly is one. Let's move it across and see. Well, here's another one. Four pegs are on, no peg inside. And let's see one more. Four pegs are on, one peg inside. So these are all quadrilaterals. So let's experiment to see if we can actually make a triangle such that there are four pegs on and no peg inside. So a nice task for primary students. How many different figures can I make that there are four pegs on, no peg inside. Now we can vary it a little by saying, let's see if we can make some figures such that there are four pegs on the figure and one peg inside. So let's see, four pegs are on, four pegs are on, one peg inside. And we can keep on varying that by saying, let's see, let's play around, here's a figure. One, two, three, four, five, six pegs are on, two pegs inside. So how many different figures can I make such that there are one, two, three, four, five, six pegs are on, two pegs inside? And one can keep on modifying that. Now that's a nice precursor to the next activity, which is now suitable for students in grades, say, six, seven, and eight. Let's look at area. Here it is, I'm making a figure, here it is. Well, let's start off by looking at this figure. Clearly, this figure has an area of one square unit. Wonderful task is how many different figures can I make with an area of one square unit? So this is one square unit, and now we can see something really nice with the geoboard. I can now pull that across, and that still has an area of one square unit. And I can ask my students, how do you know that the area of this is one square unit? One of the wonderful things about the geoboard is how it really deepens a student's conceptual understanding of the mathematics. Because if the area of this rectangle is two square units, then clearly this is a half of one. That's a half. One half plus one half, that's one. One from two leaves me with one. So the area of this parallelogram is one square unit. And I can keep on putting it across one, and I can keep on putting it across one. Now notice there are four pegs on and no peg inside. Oh, is there a pattern? Is it true that any figure I can make with four pegs on, no peg inside, has an area of one square unit? Of course, that's, that leads to what's known as Pick's Rule. So we can use this for area quite nicely. Another problem that is really nice, especially for students in grades, say, 7, 8, and 9, is how many different sizes of squares can I make on a 5x5? Five five? It's not as easy a task as it looks, so let me use this geoboard. So how many different sizes of squares? Well, let's see. Clearly. This is one. Here's a second one I can make, clearly a square. I'm trying to do it systematically, so I can make a third one. Here's a third one. So we have one, two, three, and the big one is four. Now many students stop at this point believing that they are just four. The area of this is one square unit, the area of this is four square units, Area of this is, you can see, three, six, nine square units. And the area of this is one, two, three, four times four, 16 square units. And many students stop at this point. But then, 
what they need to see is that there are others. So for example, here is another one. Clearly, it's a square. And the size of this square is not the same as this one. This one is one square unit because it's one unit times one unit. But this one is not one unit. This is the square root of two. So this is really root two times root two. So it's a nice way to show students that root two times root two is actually two. So this is the fifth square. And now we come to the sixth square, which is this one, which is a nice representation of two root two times two root two. So now we are into the sixth square. And actually, there are two more. So let's see what the others are. Well, I guess I can play around with this one. I'll just turn this around a little so I can see it more clearly. And here is a seventh one. And then, in fact, this is a wonderful one to look at because this could be the precursor to having the students look at the Pythagorean theorem and determine the area of this. In fact, a wonderful problem also to give students is how many different ways can you find the area of this? And one easy way is if I take my elastic band, you can see, and I like this approach, the area of that big square you can see is 1, 2, 3 times 3. That's 3 times 3. You can see the area of that is 9 square units. Now these two triangles are congruent. And if I rotate this triangle to sit here, you can see this triangle plus this triangle will give me an area of 2 square units. These two triangles are congruent. If I rotate this triangle to sit here, that's 2 square units. So that's 2 plus 2, that's 4. 4 minus 9, you can see what the area of this will be. And the last square is a messy one to get. But if I get the midpoint of this, you can see this square as well. So once again, we can determine the area of this easily. We don't have to multiply this length by this length, which can be messy because I guess this would be 2 root 2. But what the students can do is they can just put the big square around it. So the geoboard can be used to determine area, perimeter. And if you turn it on the other side, you see the circular geoboard. And this one, unfortunately, is not used by many teachers, but there's some wonderful tasks. For example, let's show you one, which I like very much indeed, one that we're all familiar with. But just to get the students to make a triangle in a semicircle. So here it is. Here's a triangle in a semicircle. Take your protractor and measure this angle. Now let's rotate it to the new point. Measure that angle. Measure that angle. And what they will see is that the angle inscribed in a semicircle is 90 degrees, which is a wonderful insight for a student to see. You can ask them some additional task. How many equilateral triangles can I make on the circular geoboard? Ignore the center pin and the four pins on the outside. Just use the pins on the circumference. How many equilateral triangles can I make? In fact, the question is, how many regular pentagons, or sorry, how many regular polygons can I make on this? So can I make a square? What about a regular uh, pentagon, a regular hexagon? a regular heptagon, octagon, and so on. So this is a versatile piece of equipment to use the geoboard, both the square arrangement and also the circular arrangement.